In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought. Welcome to our Sunday afternoon virtual lesson. So glad that we are able to spend this time together to study God's Word. If you can, we'd love to see you in person at 6 o'clock on Sunday evenings, 7 o'clock for Bible study on Wednesdays, 9 for Bible study, and 10 for worship on Sundays. We'd love to have you here in person as we spend time together worshiping God and spending time in God's Word. Go ahead and open to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 17, and put a marker there, and we'll come to that text in just a moment. As you're turning there, I want to remind you that this morning we talked about, we talked about digging a defensive ditch. We talk about digging our defenses deep as we study God's Word so that we can be victorious in our life, and victorious over sin and over Satan. There's a song that, an, old, an older song that we sometimes sing at church that says, faith is the victory. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. And that comes from what John says in 1 John 5 and verse 4. But I like that song for as long as I can remember, maybe because I don't think you can sing that song about faith being a victory while you're being sad. In fact, if you're sad and you start singing that song, you'll be happy by the time you finish the song because that song reminds you that we are encamped along the hills of life, but faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Such an uplifting thought that John gives us, that the Spirit gives us, that the writer of that song tries to convey as they remind us of Scripture. Victory. How do we have this victorious faith, though? This whole month of August, we're looking at that idea of defending the faith. And it starts with digging deep, studying God's Word, and growing our faith. But how do we build that faith? Philippians 4 and verse 13, Paul says, I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. You look at the context surrounding that verse, and you find out that, that Paul had his struggles. Look at verse 10, uh, look at verse 10 through about verse 12, and you read, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now you at last have revived your thinking about me. Indeed, you were thinking about me, but lack opportunity. Not that I speak from want, for I learn to be content in whatever circumstances I am in. I know how to get along with humble means, and I know how to live in abundance. And in all, all things, I've learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, of having abundance and suffering need, I can do all things for him who strengthens me. Life can throw a lot at me and it can bring me down, or, or I can be on top of the world, but my strength doesn't come from me. My strength comes from God. Where does faith like that come from? He's saying tough th circumstances, but he learned victory. He's saying don't let life pull you down. Trust in God. Succeeds and supersedes life. Faith is the victory over the circumstances of life. Nehemiah 4 and verse 20, Nehemiah and company have returned to rebuild Jerusalem's wall. And it says, at whatever place you hear the sound of the trumpet, there gather together for us. Our God will fight for us. Without a wall, they were vulnerable to attacks. Without a wall, they were exposed to the enemy, but they, they had a plan. They had a plan to gather together and fight together. But that plan also made the realization that God will be fighting with them and for them. We are vulnerable to attacks from our adversary. But we have a plan and we know God will fight for us. The battle belongs to the Lord and the Lord never loses. Faith is the victory over the attacks of our enemy, over worry over fear, and over the fear of failure. Psalm 46 and verse 1, the psalmist says these familiar words, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God is our refuge. He's our shelter. He's our strength. He's our security. God is a, a trustworthy force that no one and nothing can reckon with. He's our refuge, our strength, our shelter, our security. 
He's a help that is very present help in trouble. Very present is another way to say 24-7, 365. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. God is a present help. That's who God is. Faith is the victory. When I need a place to hide. When I need a place to rest. When I need shelter. And when I need security. Faith is the victory. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13, Paul says, No temptation has overcome you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful and will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will provide a way of escape so that you will be able to endure it. God promises that we can win over temptation. Now this verse does not say God will not give us more than we can handle, but it says when those things come, we can handle them with God because he provides the way of escape. So there is more than I can handle by myself, but not more than I can handle with God. God is there. Tempted is not sin. There's a way out of temptation. There's a way to keep from sinning. It takes faith. It takes strength. It takes prayer. It takes me and God working together. Faith is the victory over temptation. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory over the circumstances of life. Faith is the victory over the attacks of our enemy. Faith is the, the victory when I, when I need a place to rest and to hide. Faith is the victory over temptation. But I still ask that question. How do I build that type of faith? That's what the apostles ask. Luke chapter 17, verse 1. Luke 17, verse 1. Now he said to his disciples, It is inevitable that stumbling blocks come, but woe to him through whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea that he would cause one of these little ones to stumble. Be on your guard. If your brother sins, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. If he sins against you seven times a day and returns to you seven times saying, I repent, forgive him. And the apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. They're looking at what Jesus is saying. God, it's hard to do that. But we know we can if we have faith. Increase our faith. They believed that Jesus was the Son of God. They believed God was the Father. They, they believed those things. So why are they saying increase our faith? Because they realize that life is hard. Life is a struggle. Temptation is there. They need help. They know faith is the victory. They want greater faith. How do we build our faith? Well, it starts with what we talked about this morning. Digging deep into God's word. I remind you of what the passage we looked at this morning from 2 Timothy 2 and verse 15. Be diligent. Do your best. Study. To show yourself. To present yourself. To prove to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed. Accurately handling the word of truth. Build faith. By spending time in God's Word. The more you spend time there, the more you learn about God, the more you learn His Word and His will, the stronger your faith will be. I guarantee it. So start by spending time in God's Word. Build faith by increasing your prayer life. Listen to what Jude says in Jude verses 20 and 21. But beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. Build yourself up by prayer. Spend time not just reading from God, but talking to God. Telling Him your struggles. Telling Him your fears. Telling Him your weaknesses. Telling Him you need Him and relying on Him and are relying on Him. Talk to God. He listens. He hears. And he cares. Build your faith by studying God's Word. Build your faith by prayer. And build your faith, well, look at Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. Hebrews 3 and verse 12. See to it, brothers, that there not be in any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God, but encourage one another day after day, so long as it is still called today, 
so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold fast to the beginning of our assurance firm until the end. Uh, we'll stop right there. I know the thought goes on, but we'll stop right there. How do I build up my faith? I, I spend time, I increase my time with other Christians who are going to help me, who are going to give me the strength, who are going to encourage me. And, and I, in turn, am encouraging them to, to keep going so that neither one of us falls away, goes into disbelief, that we encourage each other to hang in there. Oh, the world is tough. I need faith to be victorious. I can build my faith by spending time in God's Word, by praying, and by spending time with God's people. Because they're there to help me. And I'm there to help them. So I close with a thought from the Apostles. Lord, increase my faith. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, we believe. We have faith. Father, help our faith to grow. Because the world life throws things at us, because the enemy attacks us, because temptation is there, and because we need help. We need a faith that is victorious, a faith that gets us through. Father, help us to spend time in your word, to spend time talking to you, and spend time with our brothers and sisters so that we can encourage each other to make it one more day. And then the next day, as long as it's called today, help us to encourage and to be encouraged. Father, thank you for sending Christ. Thank you for the grace that, is, that brings righteousness to us through our faith in him and you. Brother, help our faith to grow. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining me and allowing me to spend this time with you. I look forward to these. I hope you do as well. Until the next time we're together, my prayer is, as always, that God will bless your day. Me home, here in the power of Christ.